Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of Flores Learns. And we are here on Edutopia Island, as usual. But today is going to be an, another one of those, let's fly to Mr. Flores' classroom. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just getting ready to fly over here. So let's go ahead and get started. It's going to be an interesting episode. We have a lot to do today. We're going to be going to uh, the island and learning about the zebra lionfish and also known as, uh, well, we'll go, we'll get into that. And also we're going to be doing a lot of other fun stuff. We're going to be paying off our, our house loan. So lots of stuff, boys and girls. So let's go ahead and get started. All right there, boys and girls. And now we are on Avo Island. Look at that. Awesome. Awesome. And also, look at this, I'm, I'm wearing my shoes this time. We are gonna be good guests, I imagine. Okay, let's make our way over to the classroom. As you can see, there are some changes here, which is kind of cool, right? All right, let's go ahead and go to the classroom. Oh, what is this over here? Is that a bug? No, nope, that's not a bug. Okay, here we go. All right, there's our classroom, and look at that. How cool is this, boys and girls? Here she is. What a wonderful looking fish. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that and get a real nice look at that. Look at that. Here, let me move out of the way so you guys can see it. There we go. And so this is, well, okay, you can come back, Jordan. Jeez, you don't have to go all the way out there. Make your way back, buddy. There you are. Okay, go ahead and take your seat. Awesome. So here we go, boys and girls. There it is, the zebra lionfish. What a cool looking fish. And by the looks of it, it doesn't look very friendly. It has a lot of stripes, and I think that's why they call it the zebra lionfish. Also known as the zebra turkey fish, probably for its fancy frills that are coming out of the, the dorsal area and back in the, in the sides as well. Okay, well, let's go ahead and go through a little bit of the facts on this wonderful and amazing fish. Let's see, what do we what do we already know about the zebra lionfish? Let's see. Well, we do know the two names that it's known for, and we can also tell you that it's found in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. That's right, boys and girls, and I know you guys know Indian and Pacific Oceans, right? Because we were studying that just this last week, so there it is. That's a cool thing that we already know, and I'm so excited about that. Aw, thank you, Jordan. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so with that being said, what else do we know about this little guy? Is he dangerous? Is this some sort of, a sort of fish that could cause a little bit of harm or a lot of harm? Yes, unfortunately it can. This fish actually is considered a very venomous fish. I know, I know it's a little scary, but the good news is we don't live near the Indian or Pacific Ocean, so we should be okay, right? But in the meantime, where is this, this, where is the venom? Where do you find it? Well, actually, it's in the dorsal area, all along its, its dorsal fin. All those little spines that you see on top, each has a little needle, right? And each needle has some poison and that's where it, where it gets its venom. I know, I know, don't worry. You'll be safe, I promise. But yeah, and so I imagine that it uses this to protect itself from its prey or its predators rather, who aren't that many. I think from what it says here, the only predator it has is a, the grouper fish. So other than that, it's pretty much a king of its own domain, which is kind of cool, right? All right, well, there you have it. There is the zebra lionfish. Pretty cool, right? Wow. Uh-oh, Jordan has an idea. But no, we're not going to take it. We're going to leave it here at Mr. Flores Island. Okay, in the meantime, let's go ahead. Now that we've learned a little bit about this, I'll put some links in the description on where you can find some more information on this cool looking fish. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and make our way back to our island, right boys and girls? So that's what we're gonna do. What, 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 hold on, I gotta, I gotta close the whole thing here. 
Don't go away just yet, Jordan. Come right back. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, sir. I know. Okay. There it is, the zebra lionfish. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Back to our own island. You know, I, I just want to appreciate this classroom for a second. This is probably a really cool little setup. I know that a lot of people have been asking what the classroom looks like. They wanted to get a better look at it, so we'll go ahead and do a quick tour. We got our whiteboards and our giant server, because, you know, we need a lot of uh, internet for all the things we do here. And this is Fred. Fred... Ah! Fred our skeleton. <laughs> all right. And this is our kindergarten garden. There it is. Cool, right? Kindergarten garden. I like saying that. That's kind of funny. But uh, we learned a little bit about flowers, and we're going to pretty soon learn about uh, crossbreeding. So, in other words, trying to see what colors make what by, uh, by planting different color flowers of the same breed, like lilies in this case. And we have some amber and a nice desk to sit at over here, which is kind of cool. And all sorts of other neat stuff. But in the meantime, oh wait, there we go. We'll make our way back here now. What's this here? Oh my gosh, that's too fun. That's too fun, Mr. Flores. Okay, here we go. Back to our airport. Here we go. What was that? Oh, wow. Okay, well, here we go. Let's jump back into the airport, and as we make our way, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our paper for the week, our daily, our checklist for this week on everything that we're learning in the classroom. So let's go ahead and cut it over to the paper now. So starting with the top left of the paper, we have our zebra turkey fish. What a really cool creature, boys and girls. I mean, it doesn't get any more interesting than this with his venomous spines and everything. Um, and then next we have our tasks for, for the week and I believe we're going to be using last week's numbers. So make sure you have those handy. And right there through there it says fish, shake trees, catch bugs, chop wood, and dig fossils. I think we did everything pretty much besides catch bugs and dig fossils. What do you guys think? And then on the other on the other side we have our thermometer which we'll look at in just a second and on the bottom left we have our Tom's Nook problem or Tom Nook's problem rather and it says what other shape could you make with the shape below how many would you need hmm that's an interesting one we'll have to look into that in a second and then the three questions about our tools and resources that we had earlier so we'll take a look at that as well in just a second so before we go on I just want to look at the thermometer here for a second and look at that boys and girls the thermometer is going up little by little how cool is that we started with no bells and now we're up to I think about 22,000 bells which makes us pretty much closer to our goal of paying off Tom Nook with our with our home loan so this is exciting all right so let's get started and um, as you know I like to have Jordan in the background kind of just doing his thing and walking around uh, look at that we're already back at the airport which is good news um, and then let's go ahead and jump into our problem what do you say so Tom Nook's problem let's go ahead and take a look what other shape could make the shape below how many would you need well first of all we need to figure out what kind of shape this is it doesn't look like a rectangle because the sides are a little uneven on both ends, right? But it does have a few sides that we can count. It almost looks like half of another shape that we've seen before. But, hmm, what could it be? That's right, it's a trapezoid. You are correct. And now that we know what the shape is, now we have to figure out what other type of shape can fit inside there to make it that specific shape now hmm what could it be so we know that um some certain shapes that we have worked with have pointy ends and or we like to call them vertices or corners right so 
what shape has those type of corners that we've seen before? I'll let you think about that for just a second. If you guessed triangle, you are correct. Congratulations, boys and girls. So that's right, triangles. If we were to fit some triangles in there, we can actually make the exact shape that's, lo that's showing us right here. And let me just cut away to the game real fast and see if you can spot this sort of shape somewhere around where Jordan is. Can you see it? I sure can. Look at that. It's on the trees, right? The little fruits form a little triangle. So I thought that was kind of interesting and I thought I'd decide to show it off to you guys as well. All right, let's go right back to the worksheet. Okay, so now that we know it's a triangle, and now we can just figure out how many do we need to make this shape. And look at that. When I put that one dark triangle in there, it sort of formed another two, right? So if we add two plus one more, that actually makes three. And look at that. We've solved our problem for today. How exciting is that? Now, one last thing before we jump into the island again. I thought it would be cool if you guys can do a bonus question and tell me what shape would we do if we put one of these same exact shapes, it's called a trapezoid by the way, and flipped it and put it right on top of this shape. What would it make? What do you guys think? I'm gonna let you think about that for a second. If you said hexagon, you are correct. That's right. This is one of the shapes that we saw last week and a hexagon has how many sides? Well, let's count them. Let's go ahead and count the top ones first. We have one, two, three, and then on the bottom, four, five, six. So hexagons have six sides. You guys did awesome. Really good job with Tom Nook's problem today. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our questions. It says, how many resources did we collect today? Well, if we remember yesterday, or actually not yesterday, but last week, we were looking at getting um, a few things, right? And from the look of it, we did shake a lot of trees, and we also used our shovel to collect resources that way. And since we had the extra controller, we actually had somebody else fishing on the island as well. So, wow, we were all over the place last week, I imagine. Okay, well, if that's that question, go ahead and fill it in. You can go ahead and say, ah, I don't know, that, that's a tough one. I'll, I'll let you guys decide. I mean, we counted on, we left it in our pockets, so we'll have to look at that question in a minute. But let's go ahead and look at the second question. Is what tools did we use today? Well, based on what we just talked about, I would say we used a pole, a fishing pole. We also used a net to catch uh, flies and bugs. And we used our hands, right? And I don't think that, I mean, even though that is considered a tool, not really a tool in the game. But there you go. So that's that one. And let's see, how many tools did we make? Well, luckily, we brought in some tools from Mr. Flores' Island, so we didn't actually have any break on us, which was really, really nice. Because you know and I know it's a bummer when everything breaks on you after a few uses, right? Those flimsy tools aren't that good. But there you go. And last but not least, let's go ahead and look at that thermometer. And how exciting is it that we're just getting a little bit closer each time we use this game to paying off our loan to Tom Nook. So let's go ahead and look at it. If you notice, there's numbers on the side. And as we put in more money into our ABD, or automatic bell dispenser, I'm gonna go ahead and we can, or actually you guys will go ahead and fill in a little bit more of our thermometer until we reach to the very top, which is 98,000 bells. So let's go ahead and make our way into the tent and see what we can do about getting that ourselves a new home. What do you say, boys and girls? Exciting times. Okay, so let's go ahead and head over to Tom here. Ah, Jordan, hello, hello. What would you like to talk to me about? I'm all ears. What should I do about my home? Eh, I'm good. About my home. Oh, Jordan. Have you made a decision about home ownership? 
As fun as living in a tent can be, a house gives you more space and helps you plant some roots. Now building a house means taking out a new loan in the amount of 98,000 bells. So what do you think? Ready to build your own home, sweet home? I think we are, boys and girls. Yes, let's do it. Let me think about it. Nah, let's do it. Thank you for your business. I'll get in construction started right away. Exciting times. By the way, you get to choose from eight different colors from the roof. Could you please select a color for the roof from this list? We have red, pink, yellow, black, and a different color. Now, as he makes his way down the list, I'm sure you guys can recognize some of these colors, right, boys and girls? We're going to go with yellow just to keep things simple. Okay, you'll have a yellow roof. I'll get that order in for you. Yes, yes. Oh, one more thing. Homeowners get an automatic Nook Mileage Program upgrade. Just give me one moment. Hmm. So this is going to be cool. We'll definitely add this into our task list for the week. And this will be an exciting way to earn a few extra miles from, um, from the island. So it'll also be a great way to just uh, have something to focus on each week as well. So there you go, Nook Miles Plus. You'll see the details when you launch the app, so please give it a look when you can. That is all from me. Your wonderful new home should be ready tomorrow. Quite exciting, yes? That was cool, boys and girls. So there you have it. We now are the proud owner of a brand new home. All thanks to you guys and your support by collecting resources on our island. All right, well, with that being said, I think we are good to go here, boys and girls. Thank you for joining on another episode and another adventure here on Edgetopia Island. And for all of those who are not in the classroom, thank you for helping by subscribing and liking and all that great stuff. And we'll see you next time, and hopefully we'll be able to see a new creature as well. Take care. Bye.